Hey, John Dran here. Today I'm making a remake of a previous tutorial, which, um, what happened with that tutorial was there was no audio because the microphone wasn't working that day, and I didn't think it was a huge deal because I didn't know so many questions would be raised, but many people have messaged me asking me to uh, send them an audio file of that video or something of the sorts because they didn't quite understand it, and with so many people asking, I decided to just totally remake the video with audio. That way, we could um, uh, show you how everything works step by step, and it's much easier to understand because this is uh, this script is a little bit more complicated than some of my other videos for beginners. So this video is on uh, platforms and jumping and smooth motion in Scratch, and uh, this is something a lot of people, I guess, have struggled with. And judging by the amount of comments. And I'm just going to start it and show you what you're going to end up with. So what you start with, you have a ball and it's moving. You can press the arrow key once and it will move a set amount smoothly, faster and then slow down like this. You can hold it down and it will move like so. You can press the up arrow key to get it to bounce. If you hold the up arrow key, it will just continue to bounce like this so you don't go up off the screen. So, let's just get started. Um, I'm gonna, I'll show you that these other sprites right here have no scripts attached to them, so we're only gonna be talking about one script. That's all that this program employs, but you're gonna have more once you've implemented this. Now, I'm just gonna go straight down this entire script and show you how it works. This first one is go to X and Y. This just, I have moved the ball here or something. When I start, it automatically starts me right there. This next three are the three variables that we're going to be using throughout the entire thing. And these variables, you're going to make them over here. It doesn't matter what you name them, but uh, name them velocity of y, velocity of x, and the maximum speed. I would just go ahead and name them that because that makes them easier to find. So, you're going to set the velocity of x and y to zero, that way you're not starting off moving. And you're going to set the max speed to whatever number you want. I've set mine to 20, and what that means is that when my ball is moving, I'm using a script that is going to continuously change itself and make itself faster up to a certain point. I don't want it to continue accelerating forever. So I've set that point to 20. Now we have a large, large forever script, and this is going to be our motion. So our first one is for moving right. We have an AND application and then an absolute value of, and that's going to be a less than. So over here you're going to put if right arrow key pressed. That's just pretty simple. And then over here you're going to say the absolute value of velocity of x is less than the maximum speed. Now, the reason we're using the absolute value is because this is a full quadrant. So over here, we have negative y. Up here, we have positive y. Over here, we have negative x, and over here, positive x. But we don't want that to start interfering with how fast we're going. So we're saying the absolute value. That way, whether it's negative or positive, it's going to be the same number. Now, what we want is that the maximum value absolute value of our velocity x is going to be less than our max speed and that's because that's simply because we don't want to accelerate forever if we're already going a certain speed we want to make sure that that is less than the maximum and if that is the case then we will change the velocity of x by 2 now if you want the ball to go faster then you're going to be changing this number to be higher. Like you can go from 2, I'm going to set it to 15 just to show you. So now what this does is when I start, you'll notice I'm going to tap just once. It sends me all the way to the edge. Tap once, sends me all the way over there. Hold it, and it looks the same. And that's because I'm from 15 to 20 is very small. So I'm hitting my maximum speed quickly, and then it's not letting me go faster. But I can just tap once, and it'll take me all the way across as opposed to switching it back over to 2 and now when I tap once it takes me that far 
holding down pretty much looks the same. Now you can change that holding down, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So you're going to change the velocity of x by 2. It's going to be the same story for the left arrow key, absolute value of velocity x to ne less than the maximum speed, but this time you're going to change by negative 2. Next we're going to talk about the sprite. So instead of having these sprites all indicate this, we're having this talk about all of them. You just said if touching sprite 2 or sprite 3 or sprite 4 or whichever ones you want to do, if they're touching, so if touching, then I'm going to want to set the velocity of y to 1. The reason we want to set the velocity of y to 1 is so that over here you notice that when it touches nothing it comes back down after 15. Over here it doesn't. It comes up onto the platform. So we have to give it something. We're giving it velocity of y is 1. And you'll see how that applies in a minute. And now, once we're touching those, once we're on top of it, if up arrow key is pressed, then we're going to set the velocity of y to 15. 15 is our velocity, meaning that it's only going to go 15 spaces. That's it. Then it has to come back down. And this is all, it's all going to remain smooth because of the way this formula works. And that's going to be down here. So once you've set the velocity of y to 15, you're going to close that if set, which has another one inside it. And then you're going to come down and you're going to set the velocity of x to the velocity x times 0.9. Now that line is probably the most confusing of everything because what you're doing is you're setting the velocity of x to itself times 0.9. Now the reason this works is because you notice up here this says change. So what you're doing is when you're pressing this you're going to change the velocity of x by 2 continuously. You're going to continue changing it, changing it, changing it, changing it, changing it, changing it, and that's going to take this velocity, multiply it by 0.9, and set the velocity to that. And we're going to move that far. Let me try to make this make a little bit more sense. So the velocity of x, the final velocity, our final speed, our final what we're changing x by, that is going to be however much we push the button times 0.9. Why 0.9? That's just how fast we want to go. You can change that number, and then this back and forth total action will be faster. So the velocity of x, which we're changing it by 2 continuously when we're pressing this button and we're still less than 20, we're changing it by 2 here, multiplying it by 0.9, and setting it to that. Now the reason we don't accelerate forever is because we set it instead of change it. So the way changes work is that they continue changing all the time. Like every millisecond, it's constantly updating and changing and changing as you continue to hold this button down, which is then continuously being multiplied by 0.9 and continuously being set as the velocity which x is being changed by. The same story for y. You're going to change by velocity y. But in this case, instead of setting it back and forth, you're going to change it by negative 1. The reason you're going to do that is because here you've set it to 1 if you're touching these. So you want to have a script here that says change it by negative 1 normally, unless this is the case. So I hope that this has made it a little bit easier to understand how this works. Basically, it's called a secondary change. If you think about a population, and the population increases by 1,000, then 1,500 the next year, and then 2,000 the next year, you have a change of different amounts, a change of 1,000, then a change of 1,500, then that's not the same. So that's your first change. But the amount it's changing by is, fif is 50 every year, five, or 500, sorry. So that's your secondary change. And this is similar. You have it, it's being set, and then it's being changed by 0.9, and this little mathematical formula where it keeps changing, keeps changing, keeps changing is going to continue and continue every second until you hit maximum speed, at which point you're going to go no faster, you're going to stay at that speed. If you want to make a game with scrolling backgrounds going up or sideways, that's also possible. And if you want to make this a little bit nicer to the point where you don't come and hang at the bottom sometimes, you're going to change it from touching sprite 2 
to say touching a certain color, and then you're going to line the top of the sprite with that color. I hope this helped, and I'll see you guys next time.